Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. That's from Assassin's Creed, right? Wrong. That's just about the essence of Chaos Magic. Hello everyone! I'm Angela and welcome back to my channel, your online resource for the academic study of magic and magic practicing religions. Today we will introduce Chaos Magic and its philosophical underpinning. I will make a separate video to address the practices which are found in Chaos Magic. Also, my lovely patrons and a viewer in the comment section of the previous video mm -hmm. have highlighted the similarities between the philosophy of of Nietzsche and that of the left-hand path. I agree, and I believe that there are a few key elements of the Nietzschean philosophy found across left-hand traditions. And although I initially thought of covering them in this video, I then realized that the matter deserves a video on its own. So stay tuned for that, because it's coming very soon. Now let's move on to the philosophy of chaos magic, shall we? Chaos magic is a magical practice appeared in the United Kingdom in the 1970s as part of the magical subculture, and it's now considered by most a left-hand tradition. The name chaos refers to the state of undetermined, unmediated, the very root of yet unrealized potentials which practitioners can reach through trance states and altered states of consciousness, otherwise known as gnosis, which in ancient Greek would be pronounced gnosis. Although the founding fathers who set the premises for this tradition are Aleister Crowley, Austin Osman Spare, and Kenneth Grant, Chaos Magic was formally created in the 1970s by Peter Carroll and Ray Shervin, the two magicians who formed the Pact of the Illuminates of Thanateros, also referred to with the acronym IOT. This order still stands as the most popular formalized group of chaos magic, even though nowadays many chaos magicians practice in independent groups or just by themselves. Chaos magic stands in between witchcraft and ceremonial magic, with substantial influences from transcultural shamanism. Even though it's theoretical framework draws massively from Aleister Crowley, chaos magic firmly rejects whatever they perceive as unnecessary ritualism, hierarchy and strict rules to abide by. Chaos magic prefers to focus on practical aspects of the magical endeavor, trying to avoid superfluous theorization and complex rituals. The idea here is to go straight to what works. On this note, Peter Carroll complained about armchair magicians, too concerned about theorizing about magic rather than actually performing successful rituals. Thus, the IOT was established with the aim of stripping down magical theory to its basics, to those practical elements which make magic work. Peter Carroll has drawn parallels himself between the historical Gnosticism and chaos magic, perhaps overemphasizing the Gnostic concept of breaking the boundaries created by the physical world to reach a higher spiritual state. However, there are substantial differences between Gnosticism and chaos magic, which need to be highlighted. While both ideologies seek to break through a perceived dualistic reality, in Gnosticism, we have a rejection of the physical world in favor of its counterpart, whereas in Chaos Magic we find a total immersion in the physical, to its very core, to then access the spiritual. As Hoodman explains, human alienation in Chaos Magic is a result of being trapped in a culturally determined Aristotelian dualistic mode of thought. Here, 
freedom is not found in rejecting one over the other but in embracing the contradictions endorsing paradoxes and all the contrasting beliefs and views which people have been conditioned to see as either or the principle of non-contradiction set by aristotle as the founding element of our reasoning is here seen as a chain that human beings need to free themselves from. The practice-oriented approach endorsed by chaos magic is also linked to their view of the metaphysical world. If nothing is true, everything is permitted and contradictions are not even an issue. Well, everything you believe is because you choose to and that choice is instrumental to the aim you want to achieve. You can believe in one or multiple gods or none of them. At the same time, as a result, things are only true as long as the chaos magician deems them useful or instrumental to the set purpose. There are chaos magicians who even make up deities from TV shows and movies, or make up their own magical correspondences instead of following the ones found in the books. And this is because the power comes from that state of chaos, which is primordial and full of potential, not by any other human-created means or rules. Furthermore, most chaos magicians see magic and contemporary scientific theory as two sides of the same coin, as both offer access to the primordial states of non-being. In chaos magic, we find find psychological interpretations of demons as hidden aspects of the psyche, and accounts of contemporary scientific discoveries, for instance from quantum physics, as means to explain occult phenomena. When it comes to how chaos magic relates to the wider esoteric milieu, as Colin Duggan highlights, we find two apparently antithetical tendencies. Perennialism, an iconoclasm. On one end we have an iconoclastic tendency, as chaos magic tears down, derides even, the established, the dogmatic and the conventional. This is called iconoclasm because it refers to destroying images, icons, idols of religious culture. On the other hand, there is an appeal to tradition which is sought as a form of legitimization. However, in chaos magic, with its notorious rejection of religious and spiritual establishments, this translates into the concept of perennialism. As I explained in more details in my video on the New Age movement, the idea of a perennial philosophy conveys the existence of an eternal truth or wisdom which is trans-historical and transcultural, deemed as a form of wisdom underlying all dogmatic religious systems which have come and gone over the ages, this labelless tradition is seen by chaos magicians as no one's property and accessible to everyone. This primordial, unstructured and open access wisdom is perceived to be found in shamanism. In the Liber Null and in the Psychonote, Peter Carroll mentions that all shamanic cultures share the same methods, a concept we also find in core shamanism, and that the secrets of magic are universal and very practical in nature. Phil Hine emphasizes even more in his three-volume work Techniques of Modern Shamanism the relation between chaos magic and shamanism. By endorsing the view of the shaman portrayed by Mircea Eliade, Phil Hine sees the shaman as the first primordial magician. So what they are trying to say here is that you don't need to abide by any rules of any occult order or religious group because the knowledge of magic underlies all religions and can be accessed regardless of specific affiliations. Thus, they say, free yourself 
of the burden of dogmas and go to the core as shamans used to do before any established religion was even born. You can access the trance states, the realm of chaos, where everything is in its potential state and you can turn into reality whichever possibility you choose. This, however, I need to say that, draws on a romanticized idea of shamanism, which is quite popular among transcultural shamans, but you find that academic debate in a different video. There are lots of philosophical and practical elements in chaos magic which I was not able to include in today's video. Otherwise it would have been a million years long. But if you like the topic, I'd be happy to make more videos on chaos magic in the future. Let me know in the comment section which part of the video you liked the most and what you'd like to see next on the channel. Also, if you like my content, please help me out by sharing my videos around as this allows me to make more videos for you guys. A shout out to my new patrons Andrew Ogilvy and Will Lowe. Hope I pronounced them right. Thank you so much for pledging to my Patreon. It means the world to me. So this is it for today's video. If you liked it smash the like button subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell, it's really important, you will be notified immediately when I upload a new video. <laughs> and as always, stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now. We'll